is the Carl Mayo Show. We're giving you the story behind the story, and we're leading the fight to take back our state for a better California. So let's talk about an update uh, on something that's really close to my heart. Um, it's, it's really what got me in this race, and that is this um, – Migration, net migration of people fleeing the state of California. And it's something I talked about on our um, Kogo radio show for many years. Uh, we were picking up uh, information, uh, both hard data, but also stories uh, that, that listeners were giving us about how many conservatives were getting fed up and frustrated with the political direction of California, and they were fleeing the state of California. Many people can't afford to live here anymore because of the high taxes, the cost of living, mandates, fees, regulations, lack of housing supply have all caused our cost of living to go through the roof. Just can't make ends meet here in California anymore. But a lot of people are leaving not just because of the cost of living, but because they can't stomach it here anymore. They see policies like ban on plastic straws, plastic bags, a ban on being able to drink wine or beer on the beach, a ban on um, just the basic comforts of life. Uh, our schools are failing. Our roads are crumbling. We've got uh, an assault on our First and Second Amendment, whether it be our churches or uh, you know groups like the Del Mar Fairgrounds Board saying that we can't have a Second Amendment um, related uh, uh, show, a convention at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Uh, and then, of course, we've got criminals being treated with more care and more welfare than the hardworking citizens uh, who will abide by the law and they, and they pay the bills. All of this causes frustration, and people are fleeing the state. Another poll has come out confirming that fact. Half of California's registered voters, including 74% of conservatives, are considering leaving the state. This is according to a poll by the Institute of Government Studies at UC Berkeley. And if Berkeley's actually picking up on this, you know it's got to be true. If they're willing to admit that their little socialist paradise has caused people to flee. Found 71% of residents considered leaving California due to the cost of living. Uh, 84% per- cited the shift in political culture. 76% identified high taxes as the biggest reason they were leaving the state of California. Now, let me break some of this down. Um, sure, you have all these people leaving California, many of them liberal because they can't afford to live here, many of them conservative because they can't stomach living here. What is the impact of that? Well, first and foremost, they're going to so-called red states and um, they're turning red states purple and blue. Uh, you see this happening in Nevada, in uh, Arizona, and even in Texas. So when uh, when people say, I'm leaving for a red state, I say, careful, careful what's going on. I think you're actually leaving for a state, and others are leaving along with you that don't share your political ideology. And so first and foremost, I don't believe that there's a safe space anywhere. Second, what is truly remarkable is that um, liberals are leaving the state because of high taxes. The elimination of the SALT deduction, you know, this is the state and local tax deduction in the uh, Trump um, uh, tax reform plan from a year and a half ago. By capping SALT deductions at only $10,000, you basically eliminate uh, those tax um, write-offs for uh, residents of high tax states like California. And I think, and the data is yet to bear this out, but my hunches are pretty, pretty good. I think a lot of these people, uh, are leaving the state of California because they can't deduct all of their state income taxes and the state income taxes are already high, sky high. And then on top of that, the cost of living generally is sky high. And on top of that, the politics are just terrible out here. And so I think that we have a confluence of a number of factors that are leading this uh, exodus, this mass exodus from the state of California. And now national news has finally caught up to what we've been talking about for five years, four years, three years. People are fleeing socialism in California, either knowingly conservatives, or unknowingly liberals that can't afford to live here anymore. So what can we do about it? I don't believe that fleeing is an option. I don't believe that fleeing is actually a good idea. And here's why. First, as I mentioned, a lot of liberals are leaving, and so therefore you're not fleeing to any red state. You're fleeing to a state that 
is going to turn purple or blue because a bunch of liberals are following you out the door. But secondly, I would argue that in order for us to save our country, conservatives must stand our ground and fight in California. And let me explain why. There's a couple reasons why. First, by fighting in California, we raise uh, the awareness nationally that California is filled with problems that are caused by socialist p- policies. The fight itself will be watched. It will be covered by national news shows as we do ballot measures, as we do rallies and campaigns and press conferences and issue reports and uncover the, the filth and the degradation and the bad quality of life, the high cost of living. As we do all of that, the rest of the country is going to learn California is screwed. California is in bad shape. Why? Socialist policies. Hmm, maybe we shouldn't be adopting socialism nationally through things like the Green New Deal, the socialist agenda presented by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and House Democrats. So first and foremost, you need to stay and fight because the nation's depending upon you. Second, by fighting in California, you tie down Democrat resources that right now are flowing from California. These are big, rich donors from Hollywood, from the Bay Area, from Silicon Valley, from even La Jolla here in Southern California, flowing to red states to flip red seats blue. If they actually were worried about the seats in their own backyard, that money wouldn't flow. Those seats in other states would not get that money, and Republicans would be able to hold some of those seats or flip them back to red. Plus, by fighting in California, you're also going to end up flipping some seats back. Oh, I believe we can if we run more inspired data-driven, best practice-oriented campaigns. California has 53 congressional seats. Right now, only seven of them seven of them are held by Republicans. It used to be 14 b- before the 2018 election. And so California does hold the path to the majority in the House of Representatives, and you are needed in the fight. And third, fight because it's the right thing to do. Fight because you don't want to give up California. Fight because we used to have great pride in this state. We never wanted to go anywhere else. We couldn't imagine going anywhere else. But now because of socialism, we are actually considering what was once unthinkable. Now, don't let them do that to you. Don't let them run you out of your home. Fight. Take it back. Now, people say, how are we going to do that? It seems like such a lost cause in California. It's not. It's not a lost cause. Here's why. Uh, sure, Democrats have an advantage. They got the liberal media on their side. They have academia on their side. They've got the courts on their side. They got every level of government on their side. They've got all these illegal voters uh, registered, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on and on. They've got advantages. But Trump faced a lot of those advantages nationwide and still won the presidency in 2016. No, I believe we can fight if we run more inspired campaigns that offer a bold agenda. I don't want us to offer Democrat light. I don't want us to be cowardly or ashamed of our ideas. No, stand stand tall, stand proud, and lay out a bold agenda and run better campaigns. Do data harvesting. Do ballot harvesting. Go and do your town halls and your meetups. Get on the college campuses. Show up at every street fair. All the things that the Democrats are doing to spread socialism. We need to start competing. I don't believe that California is a lost cause because I don't believe we've put our best foot forward yet. No, we've only begun to fight. And I believe my campaign for Congress is providing at least best practices, if not a whole model on how you can fight back in California. Now, coming up, I want to give you an update on my campaign for Congress. There's a, a couple polls out, and I'll tell you why my campaign for Congress is, in essence, taking on the Democrat Socialists and the Rhino Republicans all at the same time. Oh, how fun. We'll prevail on the Carl DeMaio Show, but first these messages. Just Carl DeMaio here. From rating our road improvement funds for bus and bike lanes to gas taxes and congestion taxes, politicians keep making it harder to drive. Traffic will only get worse unless we demand change. Join me, Carl DeMaio, by signing the petition at FixSanDiegoRoads.org. Carl DeMaio thinks it's time to clean up the mess in Congress and take a new approach to solving problems. That's why Carl DeMaio is proposing the Fix Congress First Plan. Make Congress live under the same laws the rest of us do. No special exemptions. 
eliminate lavish congressional pensions and other perks, force Congress to open up its own books and records to public review, make Congress read the bills first before they vote on them, no budget, no pay, permanently take away Congress's pay for every day the budget is late. If we want better results from Washington, we need to start by fixing Congress first. That's why it's time to help Carl DeMaio get his Fix Congress First plan enacted. Sign Carl's petition and help fix Congress first. This is the Carl DeMaio Show. We were just talking about this poll that uh, Berkeley did showing that people are fleeing the state of California and that uh, 71% of Californians are actively thinking about leaving, and a, a lion's show, share, 74% of conservatives um, are, um, are thinking about leaving the state. This is a big deal, and I told you why uh, we need to fight for California, but let me tell you how we're going to fight. In my campaign for Congress, we're using a number of uh, – Techniques that I believe all Republicans should use in California to win. First and foremost, if you take a look at our website, carldemayo.com, you're going to find uh, that I'm laying out detailed, bold, specific plans on a whole range of issues from uh, mass shootings to securing the border to uh, my version of repeal and, repeal and replace of Obamacare, which I call Freedom Care. Um, every issue you can imagine, even on the environment, we have positive ideas on environmental uh, protection and outcomes. We are laying out a bold idea, idea on every issue that the voters are concerned about. And I think that's where we've lost ground in California is that we're always seen as the party of no, and it's good to be against socialism, but we've got to be for a bold agenda. Second, we are using data. We are using technology. We are using canvassing. We are using town halls and meetups and events and photo booths, all this stuff to identify voters, communicate with voters, and harvest voters. And finally, we are uh, engaging the grassroots volunteers and grassroots donors in providing the fuel for our campaign so that Democrats don't have a cash advantage. A couple things that indicate our success. First and foremost, I was so proud of what we did in fundraising in the third quarter. We got in the, in the race in, in a month into the third quarter, so we didn't even have a full quarter to do our fundraising. I launched on August 5th and only had until September 30th, but in that short period of time, we were able to break records. $250,000 raised in 24 hours, $450,000 raised in, four, in uh, 72 hours, and 1.3 million, over 1.3 million raised in just the first eight weeks through September 30th. They might say, well, Carl, that's a lot of fat cats. No, no fat cat donors. No, we got our resources from over 20,872 individual donors. That breaks a record. Both the amount raised and the number of donors that actually contributed to the campaign breaks a record for any Republican running for Congress in the history of us running in an elections. Plus, it breaks records for the Democrats, too. Oh, yeah. Now, if I were a Democrat and posted these numbers, you know that this would be national news. And we did get some national news coverage, but not the same level of what the D Democrats would receive from the media in terms of cartwheels and, and fireworks. Um, but I'm proud of the fact that we are a grassroots funded campaign. The average donation of the 20,872 donors that we got involved in the campaign in the first eight weeks was $64. $64. Now, a lot of them gave $5, but it all adds up. And it is repeating donations. A lot of those donors will give time and time and time again, and I'm proud of that. Republicans need to do that. If they're going to stand up to the billionaires like George Soros and Tom Steyer and the government labor unions with unlimited money, they're going to have to respect the $5 donor as much as they curry favor with the $5,000 donor. Now, I'm up against the Democrat. Amar Kampanajar, who has a million dollars that he's already raised, a lot of that money coming from special interest. I'm also up against, oh, golly, Daryl Issa, the big old quitter from the 49th. He could write a check out of his personal bank account because he's worth $400 million. That's right. He likes the title, and so he's going to try to buy the title. I get it. He'll outspend us, but he's not going to outwork us. 
and the fact that we are able to raise our money from individuals, real voters, grassroots, a lot of passion, a lot of uh, uh, street support will help us get across the finish line. Now, here's the other thing. Um, the polling has been very good to us. Besides just raising a bunch of money, uh, we now have two polls out saying the same thing, and that is I'm the Republican front runner in this race. And it's shocking the liberal media. Because they thought, oh, Hunter Dynasty, 40 years, he's going to be in the front leading position. With all these Republicans in the race, chop, 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 it's obviously that Hunter's going to make it in the runoff. Nope. The first poll that came out was Terrence Group. Terrence Group is one of the three nationally approved pollsters of the Cal- uh, of the Republican Party nationally. Um, and here is a reading from it. It says that among primary Republican voters, DeMaio maintains a 74% favorable rating, the best of any candidate evaluated in the 50th district. Better than Hunter, better than Daryl Issa, better than Brian Jones. I'm winning Trump voters, social conservatives, fiscal conservatives, and independents. Favorable ratings, 51%. Favorable, unfavorable, 18%. Mainly Democrats. Total name ID, 85%. Daryl Issa, on the other hand, has a problem. 41% favorable, 37% unfavorable. It's hard for him to recover from those numbers. Brian Jones, nobody really knows who he is. Um, he's a nice guy, by the way, uh, but he shouldn't be in this race. Um, he could become a spoiler. Duncan Hunter is completely underwater, 54% unfavorable, 37% favorable. But here are the results of the actual um, um, uh, matchups. In um, the first field, I'm leading 34% to 37% for the Democrat. But amongst the Republicans, I'm leading 34% to 15% combined from all the candidates. But when you add in Duncan Hunter and Daryl Issa, I'm leading 30% to 16% for Hunter, to 9% for Issa, to 3% from uh, Brian Jones. Now, there's a separate poll that came out, Survey USA. Survey USA uh, was uh, asked to do a poll by Union Tribune and 10 News. They show the same ranking of candidates. I'm in first place at uh, 20% overall, but amongst primary voters that are most likely to vote, 24%. Daryl Issa is in a distant second place in the mid-teens. Duncan Hunter is in third place in the low teens. And Brian Jones at 3%. Now, um, I'm not taking any of this for granted, but I will say that I'm pleased with our starting position. And the liberal media locally and the liberal media in D.C., they don't understand it. How could this guy uh, be winning against not one but two incumbents? Because they, they basically see Daryl Issa as an incumbent. How could this be happening? And my response is, well, Duncan Hunter and Daryl Issa, they had their shot. They spent years in Washington. Daryl Issa was there for 20 years. He quit on the 49th Congressional District. Gave it up without a fight. Because he gave it up without a fight, the Democrats were easily able to pick it up. He neglected his constituents. He hurt the Republican Party brand in his district. They were easily able to pick it up. And because he didn't put up a fight, win, lose, or draw, we probably lost other seats as well. Plus, he took $650,000 of his donors' money and put it into his personal bank account when he retired. Now he says, thank you, but I'm back. Nope. You had your time. You were the past. California Republicans need a fighter, someone who's not going to seek a position for a title, someone who's not going to run from a fight, Daryl. I think California Republicans want a new generation of leader who's going to take our fight to the next level. And that's why I think we got the support in the polls. Now, I don't take polls uh, very seriously this far out because things change. And so that's why we have to run a, an aggressive campaign. But my campaign is all about what we started this uh, segment, um, this show about, and that is giving hope to people who are fleeing the state of California, letting them know that fleeing is not the only option, that you you can and should stand and fight. And what I want to do is show that this campaign is bringing so much energy, so much enthusiasm, so much support to the table that people say, this guy may be onto something. It's not me. It's you. It's our movement. 
we're onto something. And so I ask that you help. I ask that you go online and share the uh, website with all your friends and family. Please let them know that we need contributions of any amount. As I mentioned, just $5 adds up. And of course, share this podcast if you're enjoying it. Let people know about it at demayoshow.com, carldemayo.com, or uh, just have them follow the Demayo Show on their favorite um, app, uh, podcast app. That does it for me. We'll pick it up next time. Thanks so much. This podcast was paid for by Carl DeMaio for Congress. I'm Carl DeMaio, and I approved this message.